Hi, I'm Tim. Join me in this video to go through an unboxed discussion and flight test of the Kiti 57 vertical takeoff, horizontal flight, vertical flight, ready to fly RC model airplane. Let's get to it. As a reminder, there are chapters in the timeline and in the description is a link if you'd like to purchase um, the Key D 570 for yourself. This is the Key D 570. It's really a quite remarkable aircraft. I've never seen anything like it in, in the whole time of flying RC model airplanes. You can see the size, fairly lightweight, and it has three brushless motors. These two here and this one back here. There's a very simple, it's EPP foam, a very simple hatch here where the battery goes in, XT30 connector. These are some electronics, and also there are additional electronics. I took off the access panel. Just a lot going on here to control the two servos, the motors, and just the flight modes of this model. Notice also there are some identifying lights here. You can change the color with the press of the transmitter button. When the battery goes low in the KD-570, these turn into red, so it comes time to come down. The battery is going to be important because I had some issues with the battery sent to me. And with three of these very strong brushless motors, it draws up a lot of current when it's flying. So we'll discuss that more later on. So what will happen in a nutshell overview, the normal flight mode is VTOL. VTOL stands for vertical takeoff and landing. An airplane, in this case, the Kiti 570, it literally takes off and can hover it just like a drone vertically. What will happen is that all three of these motors will work, the two front rotors <clears throat> and this one in back, and somehow through electronic magic, it's all balanced and guided. You fly it just like a drone in terms of rotating it up, down, and, and lateral movement to the side fore and aft. And we'll demonstrate this in a minute. There's also the airplane mode where it flies just like an airplane, horizontal flight, using these wings for lift and these tail control surfaces as a elevon uh, pitch and roll control function. What will happen is when you go to that mode on the transmit, I'll demonstrate later, these motors pitch down initially like that to get it moving forward that automatically go horizontal to make it fly like an airplane with these two motors and the back one off. The other mode, uh, mode the vertical flight, is by flipping a switch that will demonstrate on the transmitter, it'll flip straight up and you can fly it in a straight up mode. Again, up, down, rotate with the left stick, then lateral movement with the right stick and transition back to VTOL flight, whatever you want to do. So that's a pretty amazing thing, how it does it, and it's all done automatically inside the transmitter. And so let's go over a little bit of discussion on that. But first, let's do a very quick unbox. I always like to do an unbox on any project. There's really nothing to unbox here because it literally, everything comes assembled. You just take it out of the box, take out the transmitter. It comes with a 1000 milliamp two cell rechargeable LiPo battery. You'll have to put four AA batteries into the transmitter, but once the battery, the flight battery is charged and you have them in your transmitter, you're ready to go. It is 2.4 gigahertz, which is standard these days for the radio. That means there's no worry about interference. And you're going to get hung up a little bit on the various terms because they're technical terms with VTOL, vertical takeoff and landing, horizontal flight, and the, the pitch flight. They use different um, descriptions of that in the instruction manual. I, I think I'll be able to make it a little bit easier to understand in this video. The other thing is a little bit aggravating and it's a kind of ongoing issue with many of these um, kits. They're, they're wonderfully engineered kits. They fly well, but it's hard to find a consistent name for them. Here you see Elf in Sky. You'll see other things on the airplane itself where they talk about the Kutai, which I guess is a company 570. What I found use at most is the KIDI, KIDI 570. That seems to be a pretty common term. The reason that is helpful and somewhat important if you're doing an internet search to get more information on these things, because the instruction manual is lacking a lot of features, search for KIDI 570. I think you'll get in pretty good shape for that. So that's all we, oh, so with the unbox, to continue with the unbox, 
you do get a transmitter right here and it's a good transmitter some very important switches directly applicable to this airplane we'll go over here shortly you have the transmitter uh, excuse me the instruction manual here the included battery um, and a charger and a few spare props and some tools because there are some screws to keep some of our hatches in place this is the view of the kitty in the box it just comes completely assembled there's the underside um, just put in batteries, charge it up, and go fly. I do need to talk to you about the battery. So this is the two-cell, 1,000 milliamp lithium polymer LiPo battery that came with the airplane. When you uh, take it out of the box, you won't find a battery because the battery is already installed here. So that's where the battery is located. As I mentioned earlier, it's an XT30 connection, which is fine. What my experience is with these lithium polymer batteries is once you have a two cell battery, as you charge it, it's important to have a, a quality charger to charge it. And you can tell by this balancing plug right here, that's how the, you can um, access the details of the two cells. Where I found out this battery had a problem was I used my normal charger right here. This is where you uh, plug in the balancing plug, the battery in there, and immediately says I can't charge this battery because there's something that it didn't like about one of the cells going in here. The minute you find something wrong with the cell, don't try to fix it. There's something going on that could not be um, helpful. You don't ever want to try to push that by charging it. You could charge it, uh, start a fire. So what I have done is I went into my collection of batteries. I have a little bit smaller two cell that does accept a charge. It has an XT30 connector. I'll be using that for the flights. The batteries are a little bit of an issue with this airplane because again, the airplane flies wonderfully, but with three engines and lights, if you leave them on, take enough power, you're gonna have short flight times, sometimes under five minutes. So this is the normal battery that came, the 1000 milliamp. This one is 660, so it's smaller. What I do believe can happen is this is a two cell that's a little bit larger. I don't know, oh, it's 1350 milliamps, so it's, a, it's about 30% bigger than this one. I think the weight is acceptable. It's gonna be pretty close to the center gravity of this airplane. It's gonna take up room in the cockpit. What you're going to do, if you use one of these batteries, you're gonna to have to modify the space in here to fit that on. It should not be an issue. It doesn't interfere with any of the electronics. But if you get that two cell battery, so as I mentioned, this is the instruction manual. It's got some pretty good illustrations, but the language could be a little bit confusing on it. So let's just take a quick look at this and I'll describe some of the issues I have with the instructions. But after this, I'll show you very clearly how all the switches work. These are some of the pages of the instruction manual. Good illustrations, there's a lot of effort that went into it. Just with the technical things, you can see my initial notes on the VTOL mode, fixed wing, and the vertical that I eventually uh, taped onto the transmitter as a memory reminder. And just uh, more details on the transmitter, but again, the translation of what the modes really mean. And good dis discussion of up, down, left, right, and transition flight. So this is the included transmitter, and um, you need four AA batteries, just the on-off switch is normal. This is just like a drone. This is a throttle. You push this up or down, full throttle. The plane goes up in the, vert in the VTOL mode, and if you do it like this, the plane will turn on that vertical axis. This is lateral movement, lateral right, lateral left, forward, and back. Remember, if the plane's coming at you, these will be reversed, just like any RC airplane, with the normal turn switches. So that's that. Keep in mind that when you're doing the vertical mode, there is no lock with GPS, so it can drift around. And the airplane doesn't know where it is, like some of your GPS helicopters, but that is the way that's normal, that's fine. And just remember, try to fly this, your initial flights, plenty of space and minimal wind, because the wind will blow it around, although it'll be very stable. Now, let's talk a little bit about the all-important mode switch right up here. You'll notice that it has vertical mode, 6G mode, and um, 3D mode here. Those are meaningless. What I've done is I've written down what it means to me. Up is VTOL, or vertical takeoff and landing. The middle position is the airplane mode, and the bottom position is the vertical mode. That, that makes sense to me. So again, with the airplane, this is the VTOL mode. It's like a drone. Airplane mode, it's flying like an airplane quite fast with the lift of the wing and the engine's down. And on the vertical mode, it's literally flying vertical. That's how it flies. 
Now, in the air, it can transition from vertical to VTOL over the switch. The computer knows how to do that, uh, so keep that in mind. So what happens is when you fly this, kind of it's safe mode, it's takeoff mode, it's desired mode till we go somewhere else, is the VTOL mode, vertical takeoff and landing. So the question comes up, if I want to do a hand launch in the airplane mode, could I do that? Is possible, yes. There's no real good hand holds, um, and you're gonna have to give a, a, a very firm launch. It's best to go into airplane mode from the VTOL mode, and that, that'll be demonstrated in flight. And also, as we turn on, you'll see how these motors pitch to adjust to that. So this is a, um, the sensitivity, high sensitivity or low. They call it large or small rudder amount, but doesn't say which is the high rates or low rates. I'm going to guess this is the expert mode. This is beginner mode. I'll fly with that. This button, when you press this, turns on the lights. So you'll have colored lights on here. I think they're green and red, whatever they are, maybe, blue. no, not red, they're green and blue. And each time you push the button, we'll demonstrate this, you'll have a different color. And the reserve color, when the battery gets low in the airplane, again, the battery again, these will turn red, which means it's time to come in for a landing. And if you want to preserve battery power, you can cycle through the switch and turn the lights off, just to save a little bit of battery power. And again, the two servos for the, for the tail controls here. So give me a moment <clears throat> to plug in the battery and then we'll demonstrate this. I'm not going to turn on the propellers here in the shop, but you'll see the pitching and the different modes and you get a feel for the logic behind that. So the airplane is powered on. Let's go ahead and take a look at the lights here. All right. And what I mentioned is with a button on the right, we push it. We get a different color. And now they're cycled off, save a little bit of electricity. So your choice, what you want to do with the lights. And again, it'll come on red when it gets to be a low battery power state. Now the all important mode switch. Remember, VTOL is a normal mode for takeoff and everything, vertical takeoff and landing, the airplane mode and the vertical. So what happens is we're in the VTOL mode. Let's say that this has taken off and it's flying along. You want to go to the airplane mode. And again, we're going to leave these motors off. There's a very important thing. We can turn the switch to the airplane mode, but nothing happens until we press this consent button right here, which I'm going to do right now. Notice the motors go down. They go down at about a 30 degree angle to get the plane moving forward. And then when the engine's running and flying, these will go all the way down, all the way down to power the alarm. If we go to the vertical mode, which is the plane flying straight up like this, with these two motors, this one off, let's watch what happens to that. That's the vertical mode right there. And if we're flying the vertical mode, we say we're done with that, we want to go to the VTOL mode, the vertical takeoff and landing, we put this all the way up, and it automatically goes there. You don't need to consent because that's your safe place, the vertical takeoff and landing. And now the plane is just still in the air. It's just hovering like a drone. You can collect your thoughts if you want to land, uh, go with the throttle. That's basically how you fly the airplane. So that's a description of what you need to fly the airplane. What I'm going to do is demonstrate in front of my house just the vertical takeoff and landing phase because that's just in the driveway hovering. To do the um, regular uh, airplane flight vertical, we need a little bit more space. I'll do that at the RC field once the weather's good to go fly. So right now, we'll do a hover test of the Kiti 570. Um, the airplane, which would be the vertical takeoff and landing mode, where we basically hover the, air, um, the airplane. Uh, so again, this is what everything looks like in the hover mode. We'll use these front two propellers and the back propeller just to be in a hover mode. Then we'll put both sticks to the five and seven o'clock position, start it up, throttle the takeoff, and just hover from there. So Here we are with up. the initial vertical takeoff and landing mode, which is powered up. It takes a fair amount of power, but it will lift off. And just on the left stick, up down, rotating the uh, vertical axis, and the right stick transition will find the fall. And it, it handles well. I mean, it just, it's a very positive feel, and uh, just does a good job in the beat. We are now out at the RC field. We'll try some um, level flight and the vertical mode. 
So, we always take off at the VTOL mode, at least I do, um, just kind of get squared away on that. And the plane's flying good, just a very nice day for a test flight. And here we are with the forward mode. You can see the engine, the motor's kicked down into the horizontal flight and it's quick. We bring it back into the VTOL mode to recover and we will do the vertical mode. So you just flip that switch all the way down, it goes automatically to the vertical mode. A little bit of practice to do that, then we flip it back to the VTOL and we come in for a normal VTOL landing. Here is another flight attempt. We'll go up and take off and get in the VTOL mode. Get a little bit higher, a little bit higher, and then go to the forward mode with that switch and the consent switch. I don't know if I did. There's another vertical takeoff. We'll try the forward mode this time. A little bit of altitude. Put the switch to the middle, consent switch. You can see it really moves right along. I couldn't turn as well as I wanted to. I needed to be in the high rate on the left-hand switch. We get a final look at the vertical takeoff, and we'll try the vertical mode to see how that works. And we flip the switch all the way down. It goes right into vertical. Then, for whatever reason, when I went back to the uh, VTOL recovery mode, it just went down like this. Back from the test flights of the Kiti, it, and it's an interesting airplane, so let's talk about it a little bit. First of all, as I've said before, congratulations, kudos to the, to the designers and engineers of this airplane to have in one small package like this a vertical takeoff and landing plane that flies well, a vertical mode, as well as a horizontal airplane mode with movable engine thrust lines. That's a big deal. Uh, the only downside of that is you're utterly dependent on the automation and the electronics to do a lot of these maneuvers. You're guiding the airplane, but if there's any low voltage or problem with the plane and it goes into a weird mode like it did on the very last one, <clears throat> there's not much you can do about it. So what I would say is this, as I mentioned, was a bad battery. Find a thousand milliamp two cell LiPo somewhere, put on your own XT30 connector. You're going to have to bring a couple batteries to the field because they, they don't last a long time. With the three engines drawing the power, it just uses a lot of power. That's to be expected. The other thing that I would say is the VTOL, the vertical takeoff and landing mode, works fine. That's really a, a very well set up and automated system. The one trick that I learned going to the airplane mode, which is once uh, switched down and put the consent switch, I did my flights the low mode. Looking back on it, you've got to be in the high mode. I just did not have enough turn authority in the airplane mode. And things happen quick. It's a small airplane. and can get out of sight pretty quick. And I kept it within. But I think you're well served to be in the high rate mode for the airplane. Note also, you may not be able to see the video because it's a smaller model. But when you go into the airplane mode, the motors initially tilt down about this much to get it moving forward. And then after a second or two, they go horizontal. You can see it just jump ahead. So that will catch you by surprise if you're not anticipating that. However, when you're done with the airplane mode, when you go up to the VTOL mode, it'll just snap right to the um, vertical takeoff and landing mode. Then you can kind of recover, figure out your orientation and go from there. The only other uh, minor point, this has been with other reviewers as well, these decals come off. These ones, just, they just came off. They just, they're not held on all that well. So that is that. It was an interesting model. I'm happy I had the chance to fly it. And uh, if you'd like to get one for yourself, by all means do so. It's a very interesting airplane to have in your RC flying fleet.